I am pleased to welcome you to the second part of this video series dedicated to the Crypto Sculpture. In this video, we will decrypt the second puzzle from the Sculpture, or K2 for short. K2 utilizes the same cipher method as K1, namely the Viganeer cipher. The primary distinction lies in its use of a different keyword for encryption. Therefore, I will not revisit the theoretical background or the crypto-specific aspects of the Viganeer cipher in this video. Instead, I highly recommend watching the video about K1 first, as the material covered in the initial video is essential for understanding the decryption method of K2. You can find the link to the video about K1 in the description below. And now, let's proceed to solve K2. As previously mentioned in the introduction, K2 employs the same cipher method as K1 for encryption, making the second puzzle a Viganeer or keyed Viganeer cipher as well. Similar to K1, K2 also utilizes the Viganeer square located on the right side of the sculpture, employing the keyed alphabet for the inner part of the tableau, with cryptos as the keyword. The most significant distinction between the encryption processes of K1 and K2 lies in the keyword used. While, palimpsest, was utilized as the key for K1, abscissa, serves as the key for K2. Regarding the meaning of the second keyword, the abscissa is the x-axis or horizontal coordinate of a point in a Cartesian coordinate system. However, this doesn't imply the absence of interesting features within the second puzzle of K2. There are indeed some noteworthy aspects to explore. Let's delve into those next. Here you can see the transcription of the text from the sculpture, with the segments highlighted that are necessary for decrypting K2. Naturally, we will need the ciphertext of K2, marked in blue, from the left side of the sculpture. However, there is a notable feature concerning the K2 ciphertext. The sculpture bears 869 characters, comprising 865 letters from the standard English alphabet, alongside four question marks acting as special characters. Among these four question marks, three are located within the ciphertext of K2, and one appears at the end of K3. As we will observe in a minute, the three question marks within K2 will yield some intriguing revelations during decryption. As previously mentioned, we also require the inner part of the Viganeer square from the right side of the sculpture. We will use the same tableau as employed for K1. Now, let's begin the decryption process of K2. Initially, our first step involves copying the entire ciphertext of K2. Following this, we write the keyword abscissa beneath the ciphertext and continue repeating it until our keystream matches the length of our ciphertext. As mentioned earlier, we will also need the Viganeer square located on the right side of the sculpture for decryption. However, similar to K1, we should only utilize the inner part of the tableau. It is crucial to avoid using the outer key and plaintext alphabets, as relying on them while searching for key and plaintext letters will not yield the correct solution. Instead, we must rely on the use of the first column and row of the inner table, just as we did with K1. Now, we can initiate the decryption process, letter by letter, following the same approach we observed with K1. We begin by searching for the corresponding key letter, an A, in the first position. Then, in the same row, we identify the cipher letter, V, in this case. Finally, from the column where the cipher letter resides, we obtain the plaintext letter, and I. Moving to the second position, we repeat the same process, finding the key letter first, then identifying the cipher letter from the same row, and finally determining the plaintext letter from the same column. If we proceed with the decryption, we get the following result. As you can observe, we obtain correct English text until the first question mark, however, the remainder of the decrypted text becomes gibberish. It is easy to suspect that the unintelligible part of the text is related to the question mark somehow. The first and simplest solution to try would be to skip it in the keystream. Let's see what happens if we try to do so. After skipping the first question mark with the keystream, or you can also consider it as shifting the keystream one position to the right, we can attempt to decrypt the remainder of the ciphertext of K2 again. As you can observe, with this letter skip or shift, we have revealed a new section of K2, but our decrypted text seems broken again after the next question mark. Additionally, 
please note that there is a misspelling in K2 as well. The word, underground, was misspelled as, undergrund. Later, we will also check if this error is present on the original encoding chart of K2 or not. Now, let's proceed with the decryption of the remainder of K2. At this point, the way forward must be obvious. We have to skip or shift the keystream at the position of the next question mark again. So, let's skip or shift the keystream once more and rewrite it below the ciphertext. As we would expect, decrypting the remainder of the ciphertext yields correct English text only until the next question mark, but this time it is not entirely the case. This shift reveals intelligible text at the end of K2 as well. Two words, layer, and, two, also appear at the end. While this might seem coincidental, it is not, but we will get back to this later. Before that, let's finish decrypting K2 with one final shift of the keystream. After skipping or shifting the keystream one final time, the complete solution for K2 can be revealed, which reads as follows. It was totally invisible. How's that possible? They used the Earth's magnetic field, X. The information was gathered and transmitted underground to an unknown location, X. Does Langley know about this? They should. It's buried out there somewhere, X. Who knows the exact location? Only WW. This was his last message, X. 38 degrees 57 minutes 6.5 seconds north, 77 degrees 8 minutes 44 seconds west. ID by Rose. For many years, this was the accepted solution for K2. However, in 2006, Mr. Sanborn made an interesting announcement regarding the last characters of K2. He announced discovering an omission in K2, while conducting a letter-by-letter -letter comparison of the plain text and coded text in preparation for a book about his work. He revealed that there is a missing X that he mistakenly deleted from the end of K2, which would originally reside after the word West. This means that in the ciphertext, there should be an additional S. Also, can you guess what the result would be if we decrypted the remaining eight letters? That's right, it would be, layer 2. So, according to Mr. Sanborn, the correct solution for K2 is the following. Finally, I would like to share two comments regarding the plain text of K2 before we examine the original encoding charts to check on the misspelled word, underground. The first one concerns the missing, X, and whether the, layer 2, version is really the correct one. Regarding this, I think both versions are correct, and this so-called error is also a clue for solving K4. Jim Gilligley, the first person to solve K2, also had an interesting thought regarding this part. He thinks this multi-solution aspect seems to fit with Ed Scheitz, the CIA cryptographer who designed the cryptography behind Cryptos, interest in duress ciphers. Duress ciphers are multi-layered ciphers for which you can give up a key to the enemy that produces credible plaintext without giving up the farm. Also, Mr. Scheidt himself said in an interview when asked about this error, that the spy business is a serious business, so you better not make errors, as they could lead to people dying. The second comment concerns this mysterious WW in the text. Mr. Sanborn revealed that WW is short for William H. Webster, the former director of the CIA. Now, let's proceed to examine the original encoding chart of K2. In 2010, Jim Sanborn published the original encoding charts for the first eight lines of cryptos, covering the full text of K1 and approximately half of K2. He mentioned that if people were to study it in a forensic manner, there might be revelations in there. On the chart of K2, I would like to highlight two things. Firstly, as you can see, Mr. Sanborn clearly skipped, or more precisely added question marks to the keystream in the positions where there is a question mark in the ciphertext. Secondly, the misspelled, underground, has no errors on the encoding chart. The plain text, key, and cipher letters are all correct, so the error wasn't introduced during the encoding process but later, during carving the letters into the sculpture. On the other hand, as already discussed in the first video, Mr. Sanborn stated in an interview that the deliberate misspellings of K1 and K2 were intentional. He further emphasized that the specifics of the misspellings, namely which letters were misspelled to what, are of less significance. Instead, the orientation of those letters holds more usefulness. 
Finally, let's discuss the keyword used to decrypt K2. As already mentioned in the first video, not only are the plain text messages encoded in the sculpture, but also the necessary keys to solve the puzzles. In theory, it is not necessary to rely solely on cryptanalysis techniques to solve the puzzles. It is possible to find the keys first and use them for decryption. While for K1 and K3, nobody has a plausible theory regarding where and how someone should look for the necessary keys, for K2, there is a good approach to finding the abscissa keyword. There are some stones around cryptos covered with copperplate that have text encoded with international Morse code carved into them. If one decodes them, the following messages can be revealed. 1. Digital interpretati. 2. Virtually invisible. 3. Shadow forces. 4. Lucid memory. 5. T is your position. 6. SOS. 7. RQ. The second message can be used for something called crib dragging. If you start to use it as a key for the decryption of K2 and shift it on unsuccessful attempts, on the fourth try, you would reveal the keyword for K2. And with this, I would like to conclude this video. Thank you for watching.